my mom. Oh, welcome um, to the ballroom, one of the largest and grandest rooms here in the city when it's constructed in 1751, along with the supper room. And these two rooms are clearly constructed for entertainment purposes. The Royal Governor's Bob here in Virginia are expected to host different social events, at least two a year. One celebrates the Queen's birth night, the other one celebrates the King's coronation. Now, Lord and Lady Dunmore will host a ball here in January of 1775. About 50 guests in attendance. They arrive early around 6 o'clock, pay their respects to Lord and Lady Dunmore, and then that's followed by dancing. Lots and lots of dancing. Virginians love to dance. Typically, the minuet will be danced first. Each couple dances at individually in the setting social order, while everyone else stands and critiques their dancing style. And they'll certainly let you know what they thought of it afterwards. You're considered a social outcast if you're not able to dance well. Now the minuet is followed by continuous reels and country dances. And that's really what this room is designed for. You line couples up in here from door to door. They'll dance those to about 11.30 or midnight and then step into the supper room for a late supper. Now you notice the all guests dancing on this gorgeous wall-to-wall -wall carpeting. As impressive as it is, it does serve a practical purpose to provide that attraction for the dancers. We also have musicians playing here throughout the night. Five or six musicians, led by Mr. Peter Pelham, who plays the concert harpsichord. Now, Pelham's an interesting character. Besides being a musician, he's also the organist, or the organist of Burke Parish Church and the keeper of the public jail at the other end of town. Now, portraits on the walls are reminding us all we are British subjects. King George III, his coronation portrait, Queen Charlotte of Mecklenburg. These are painted by Sir Alan Ramsey, the official court painter. Over here we have King Charles II of the Stuart line. Lord and Lady Dunmore descend from him, and he restores the British monarchy to the throne in 1660. He also refers to Virginia as the Old Dominion, very loyal to the king. On the left, Catherine Braganza, his wife, her fortune finances his restoration to the throne. At the time, she is the richest woman in the world. She also makes tea drinking popular, which will cause some trouble here in the colonies later on. Opposite wall, you have a warming stove, allowing the space to be used in the colder months. And there are four of them cast in London, two for the palace and two for the capital. They're coal burning stoves. Burning coal is more impressive because it's more expensive because it's being imported. There's a higher grade of coal coming out of Europe at this time. And incidentally, Lord Dunmore has coal mines in Scotland and graciously sells them to the colony for a profit, of course. Questions? Over that door you have a GR with the crown, George's Rex, King George. There was also one on the ceiling over the stairwell as well. Mm -hmm. Another symbol of royal authority. On this wall you have the family crest of the House of Hanover. In there there are symbols for England, Ireland, Scotland, and also part of France. The fifth dominion in the British Empire uh, was Virginia when it was established in the 17th century. That's why it's called the Old Dominion. Other questions? Let's step into the supper room. This looks nice. I think it's oh, like, I like a. Red. Uh, oh, that, that was. I really like that wall. That's what I like. Well, this is a, a better color for wall. I think it's like it inspires. Did you guys find a big I'm not a pro in the 18th century as they are now, but yeah, they're doing good. Alright. Around 11.30 or midnight, the supper would have been served in here, sort of buffet style. You have lots and lots of desserts, and also what are called sweetmeats, which are fruits and nuts. All of that gives the ball guests lots of energy, which they need because they're not going home, they're going back in here and continuing to dance. You arrive at 6 o'clock in the evening, you might not leave here until 6 in the morning. So 12 hours of dancing, drinking, eating, partying, you go home and collapse. Now besides eating in here, they're also refreshing themselves with wines, brandies, rum punches. One recipe of rum punch calls for two parts brandy, two parts rum, a couple of spoonfuls of water, and some citrus. So strong it can uh, serve itself. Now, all this fanfare comes to an end with the departure of our world governor. 
uh, in June of 1775, June 8th at 2 a.m. in the morning, Lord Dunmore and his family exit out these doors, never to return. They feel it's no longer safe for them here in the city. They head to the safety of a British warship. Lord Dunmore sends his family back to Great Britain for safekeeping. He stays here in the colony for about a year, conducting the war on behalf of the king, but ultimately is unsuccessful. He returns to Great Britain in August of 1776. Now, by that time frame, Virginia has declared independence, and Patrick Henry, our first elected governor, moves into the house and promptly sells off all of Lord Dunmore's belongings at auction to raise money for the new government. Lord Dunmore, for his failure here in Virginia after the Revolution, is appointed to his last post by the king. He is exiled to the Bahamas for ten years. At the time, the Bahamas was a slave colony. It was hot. It was humid. It was not a desired post to have. Lady, Lady Dunmore and the children do not join him in the Bahamas. And that is the end of our last rural governor. At this time, I welcome you all to exit to the gardens. If anyone has questions afterwards, I'm very happy to answer them. Thank you all very much. Enjoy the rest of your day, and God save Virginia. <laughs> My pleasure. Turn and pull.